Welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. You've just arrived at the rum colony. Let's check it out. It's got such a dreamy and I think romantic kind of uh, look to it. And oh, is that Ezra? <laughs> Playing around on the beach? I think so, just going for a jog. Running around. Oh, is that Johnny and Junebug? Yep, sounds like him. To Shannon. Our friend Serrano back here tonight. Or is booked here tonight, rather. He's pretty good. He's a wizard. A wizard of the lap steel guitar. <laughs> oh, I hope I get to watch another musical performance. Are you two coming ashore? Oh, sure. We'll be up in a minute. You couldn't hold me back. Oh, I don't know. Kate says just to wander back whenever. This is a take it easy kind of stop. She doesn't even blow the foghorn to round up the crew here. No point. Something about this spot is like wax in the ear when it comes to timetables and responsibilities. I was supposed to meet someone here earlier tonight about some bike parts. Hope she's still around. Oh, I'm sure she is, ma'am. Half sleeping into a fragrant mug with all the other wayward sailors. I feel like I should just leave the flashlight off. Kind of hurts the atmosphere to have it on. Not to mention it's probably pretty rude that people around here just shining a flashlight in their face. Go interrupt their date or something over here. Bureau folks. Yelling. <laughs> the water is fine, invigorating, makes me want to run. I could gallop up and down this beach like a horse. What's he yelling about? He wants to run on the beach like a horse, he says. To Shannon. Oh dear, what's in these drinks? You folks work at the Bureau. We're celebrating. We just hit a big milestone, you know? The clerks both pause, waiting for the other to speak. Well, tell her about it. But I don't know anything more than you do. It wasn't part of my caseload. Well, it wasn't part of mine. I wonder just what we're celebrating. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yelling, invigorating! Yelling to Lewis, catch anything, Lewis? So, did you find what you were looking for? With Lula, I mean. It's a work in progress. I know what you mean. I've been working on... Yelling. I think I will go for a run along the beach as soon as I'm finished with this drink. Try not to yell so loud, Lewis. I'm afraid you'll shake the ceiling loose. Maybe Shama light in their face for a second. What is that noise? Wait, I saw something on the ground too. Is that... What is that? Right there. Is that a drink? Can't tell. Sounds like a radio is going off too. Yeah, some things you can't see without the flashlight, so it's worth having it on. Like this, for example. Styrofoam cup is half buried in the sand, miraculously intact. Still has some coffee in it. Maybe it came from the bar. Or maybe someone dropped deer on their way to the bar. Maybe they weren't even headed to the bar originally, but drank their coffee too fast and needed a stiff counterbalance. Shannon thinks about the war of liquids in the stomach. Coffee to start a day, liquor to end it. Apple cider vinegar to patch up the battlefield. Her mouth feels dry. 
She thinks about all the nervous casualties of the liquid war, clumsy alchemists transmuting day into night. She thinks about a chalky gray-pink liquid her mother kept for upset stomachs. That was stored in a coffee cup, too. It's like the world just ends up here, where it gets all dark. Ooh, I see somebody with a lap steel guitar. I think we're going to get to watch. I wonder if the cat sound or anything are going to be used <laughs> in the performance that we took as Ezra. Wait, hold on. Looks like they have to be in the light. Rick. This music is so sweet. Don't you think so? It's like a flower, I think. A delicious, heavy flower. Like this flower in my drink. Makes my eyelids feel like petals wet with early morning dew. Have you ever slept on the beach? Doesn't the sand get all... everywhere? Oh, probably. I'll deal with that tomorrow. I certainly won't deal with it tonight. Tonight, I'm just sipping this... I forget what it's called. They put a pale pink flower in it. Isn't that tranquil? Oh gosh, I'm so stressed out. What are you stressed about? Work, love, the weight of each approaching day. Everyone deserves to rest, don't you think? Even you and I? Sure we do. Someday the lake and the riverbed will be dry. The shops along it will be bankrupt, the homes empty, the boats abandoned. See, even the river will rest. Why should we be any different? You know, my colleagues and I are meant to be celebrating something of a milestone here this evening. <laughs> I wonder if Rick knows what they're celebrating. It's true, we, uh, well, it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces. Ever heard of it? Of course, I met you there earlier tonight. Oh, we... Uh, of course. Good to see you again. Oh, wait, now I remember. You came by to see Lula. I mean, Senior Clerk Chamberlain. Oh, our dear Lula. I mean, Miss Chamberlain. Uh, tragically, she couldn't join us tonight. Jumped ship the last minute. She said she had packing to do. I wonder where she's going. A profound sigh. All this conversation is making me lightheaded. I think I'll shut my eyes a bit. Maybe just halfway. I'll listen to the water and the sweet music. And the whispers of my colleagues. Shop talk. Can you believe it? Still working. Always working. It's better, I think, to sleep. Yes, better to sleep. No one actually knows what they're celebrating. Shannon finds a bottle. Its label is worn away, but the words Hot Hell Rum are literally embossed, legibly embossed on the glass. The bottle is empty except for a sleeping crab. Aw. Have a good sleep, little crab. Ah, Will. Hello. Happy to be in the here and now. I heard a shuffling. Are you dragging your feet or just enjoying the sand between your toes? Yeah, it's nice to slow down for a minute. We have time. Lots of glass here. Patches boys load the empties on the barge. I told them try to keep it separated in its own little pile. That way, when we get to disposing of it, any environmentally minded folks present can easily set them aside for recycling. I love the river, but I don't care for the current. It's too relentless. Lake Leth, though, it's calm, cold, and deep. 
At any opportunity, I'm ashore meditating. One day I may be left behind. I wanted to ask you something. I thought of it earlier, but it didn't seem like the right time. I'm sure you know what I'm getting at. You wanted to ask about my friend, the old man. Oh, no, I think I read him pretty clearly. He's an outwards reflecting kind of person. I mean, he reflects the world back out, largely uncolored. You and I, we're inward reflecting, I think. It means we prefer to nurture the best and worst of ourselves in quiet and interior spaces. And that's okay. Wouldn't you agree? I guess so. Yeah, I thought so. Wait, <laughs> um, what did you want to ask, Will? Okay. Shannon pulls the feather from the sand and brushes it clean. When she was a child, she collected feathers. Not the way a hobbyist collects trinkets, but the way a clump of dust collects more dust by static electricity. She deposited them on the kitchen table at the end of the day. Weaver's mother said it was unhygienic. Shannon's mother said that was American germaphobe bullshit and put them in a vase. An untouched drink sits on a table forgotten or abandoned or simply wasted. Hold on, let's see if we can talk to Ezra. Eh. Uh... I need to stop and have them in the light, I th think. I don't know if it's possible. Turn, Shannon! I wonder if Ezra ever stops. Nah, it doesn't look like it. I never stopped and I followed them for a little while. There she is. You have to try one of these flower drinks. I feel like I could drink a hundred of them. Not too sweet, not too strong, you know? A real session drink. What's it called? I think you said it was a... Uh, well... How do you like that? I'll just show him the flower. Another one of these, I'll say, and then I'll point to the flower. <laughs> Maybe I'll wear it in my hair. It doesn't taste like a flower. I mean, not like a flower smells, you know? Perfumed, sickly sweet, like a... Like a star thistle flower. One of my first long haul gigs ended in a crash. Did I tell you about that? It wasn't so bad, actually. I swerved to dodge some stray cattle, hit a stump on the side of the road, and flipped the trailer. The whole rig went twisting down into a muddy ditch. It was spring, and I blacked out. I don't think I hit anything. It was just the shock of it. Or maybe my brain bounced against the inside of my skull or something. Anyway, I woke up and I'd been thrown clear. Never worn a seatbelt since. Oh, why'd I bring that up? A star thistle. Woke up in a field of star thistle. First thing I thought was, what are all these damn ugly flowers? <sighs> More old stuff. I'm drowning in old stuff tonight. Feels like I've got it piled up all around me. Like one of those old guys you hear about who never threw anything away. You know what I mean? Don't worry about all that stuff. Just try to, uh, stay in the here and now. Yeah, it's a nice idea. But I'll tell you what I'm learning tonight. I don't belong in the here and now. That check's been cashed. Sorry, I'm not making sense, am I? Just mean to say, I'm... I can't look at anything without remembering something else. And then that reminds me of something else, and I'm buried in it. Just need to get my head clear for a minute, get a clear view of the day, get oriented. 
There was a time when I felt this way. I'd bite the bullet, try to sober up and get a job. Is that why you're going to work for the distillery? Hmm. Maybe it is. Seems like a pretty simple answer, right? Just follow the work as long as you can. <laughs> You've got me all figured out. Hey, I'm gonna sit and look at the water for a minute. I'll talk to you later. Don't be a stranger. Oh, I saw that on the ground. What is that? At first, Shannon mistakes the iridescent glimmer for a seashell washed up from the lake. Maybe some freshwater relative of the, uh, abalone. Or even a pearl. But it's only a trading card. Must have been valuable to someone, or it wouldn't be printed on this lustrous material. Whatever was on it was has mostly worn away. All that's left is the shiny backing and the words, Gleaners, something forward. Gleaners. photograph, washed up on the beach, is too faded to interpret. There's something large or close in the foreground. The background is dim, but not dark. Maybe it's evening. It's not night. Or it might be night, but in a well-lit place, like a city or a gas station. Is that a dog? Sunny. Hey, did you hear the ice caps are melting? I mean, the polar ice caps. The ones all the way at the top. To Shannon. Don't listen to him, hon. He's all doom and gloom tonight. Don't listen. That's the answer, Don. But what else can you do? Someday, all of this will be underwater. We'll all be drowned. What can you do? You can... Recycle? Half measures avail us of nothing. Don't be a pessimist, Sonny. Have another Mai Tai. To Shannon. He's just in a dark mood because the bar is crowded tonight. He likes to spread out. You know an unidentified toxin has decimated the deer population, right? Uh... I should go. Sonny... You're insufferable. An unidentified toxin. That's his latest rant. But I'm not surprised by anything anymore. Before this, it was bovine growth hormones and global warming. Nah, he's harmless. I just don't know him anymore, that's all. He takes bits and pieces of things he reads and synthesizes them all into some grand theory. And it's always the end of the world. But who could know that stuff, right? We can't even predict the weather. I mean, if you could take all these little places and predict how they're all going to interact, or sorry, little pieces, well, you'd know everything. I'll tell you what I'd do with that kind of knowledge. When I first met a man, I'd look at his shoes and the kind of books he reads, and what he eats for breakfast, and I'd make damn sure we weren't doomed to spend our twilight years greedily emptying Mai Tais and arguing about an unidentified toxin. Well, you know what they say about hindsight. Here's to a better yesterday. Oh, Christ. Dump him, Don. I think I'll speak to the bartender last.
actually. I don't think I can speak with anybody else. Okay, bartender it is. Junebug. Hey, guess who I just saw like an hour ago? That lady with the engine for sale? You just missed her. I tried to hold her back, but she's all business. It's okay. We can't really afford it. Hey, I'm sure another one will come on the market soon. Hey, any of your friends want a drink? I've got time. Busy night, but everyone's deep in their straws by now. Why so busy? It's these kooks from up river. They all came in together. I think it's some kind of work thing. They're nice enough, but, you know, I've got to keep an eye out for lightweights trying to swim home or something. I don't have that kind of insurance. Anyway, I don't mind them, but you know how territorial Don and Sonny, uh, Don and Sonny? Sonny? I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Sonny. Um, you know how territorial Don and Sonny get after a couple of Mai Tais? Speaking of which... We'll pass. Take it easy, Patch. No problem. See you around. Can we watch the performance now? I think we can. Oh, I bet this is going to be good. I am so glad to see you. These kooks are bumming me out, man. You see that guy in the sand over there? He rolled up, kind of off-center, you know? Kind of leaning on the stage here, and he was like, What kind of strings are those? Steel or nylon? Oh, so rude. I mean, you know me, man. I'm all about breaking down the artificial barrier between audience and performer, but you can't just... Hey, how's that new tape going? Oh yeah, it's good, man. I mean, it's okay. Everything's recorded, but I still want to do another pass on it. Maybe work on the mix. But it's no rush on that, because I don't have the cash for blank tapes right now anyway. Patch threw me some bookings, so I'm trying to fund it with tips. But, you know, we're all paying a premium for blank media these days. Everyone's afraid we're dubbing garbage off the radio, so they only sell blank tapes and pallets, or overpriced three-packs. Totally cut out the small labels and self-publishers. Crystal and Gordon are just recording over old tapes for their new one. Can you believe that? It saves some cash, I guess, but you're always going to have old frequencies bleeding through. It's just chemistry, man. It's a very interesting idea there. It kind of resonates with some of what we're seeing a little bit. Oh, hey, Ezra. <laughs> just sprinting over. They, they literally are just like going for a run. Never stopping. Anyway, yeah, this resonates a lot with what we've seen, actually. Dubbing over old tapes saves money, but you're always going to have old frequencies bleeding through. That just makes me think a lot about what we're seeing. You know, things from the past bleeding through. And frequencies are obviously very important. I mean, to get to the zero at all, didn't we have to listen... Was it was that how we got to the zero? We had to listen for a frequency and then immediately turn back? Or was that how we navigated when we were within the zero? I don't remember exactly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how we got there. But yeah, frequencies definitely play a big role in everything that's happening. Not that I... I mean... Not that, like, Xanadu was made on top of old tapes or anything like that, but... I don't know. Thematically, it just feels interesting. Hey, speaking of which... I'm about mid-set here. Can you take the can around while I play this next one? It's on the tape. I think you'll like it, man.
That was cool. Are they playing this new one? I think they are. Let's see if we can hear them as we walk back to the dock. Pretty sure we can. I didn't realize you could walk back there. Ezra just ran back there. Hmm, I think it's a lot quieter back here. Oh, I think it's time to head back anyway. Well, that was a pleasant detour. Yes, ma'am. The Shannon. Ready to get moving? I bet you round up the old man if you can tear him free. Oh, right. Oh, and Ezra too, right? Not that I can actually speak with them. Yeah, you're right about that. Never quite thought of it that way. <laughs> oh, I hear static. Who are you talking to? I'm noticing Shannon for the first time. Oh. Nah, it's nothing. Hey, let's get out of here. Work to be done, right? This reminds me of Sunless Sea a little bit. Driving a boat in some odd underground cavern. It's easy to miss, but beneath the quarter acre swarm of moths, that's Atticus, uh, Pidocompa, the rough tunnel moth, their diet is mostly constrained to smaller insects, but they make an exception for sunflowers is a quarter acre sunflower orchard and beneath that sunflower orchard there are two small lots with small houses positions they just about butt up right against each other the houses are empty now of human life there's no sign of a person or anything living except for moths and overgrowth there are some pipes bolted into the cave wall near the perimeter and a few stone scars where other pipes have been ripped away by scavengers these once supported the large grow lamps that fed the sunflowers. The lamps are gone now. Once this crop of sunflowers is picked away, it's unlikely anything else will grow here but lichen, moss, and rock formations. The rough tunnel moth will move on. The houses will be visible again, at least until somebody strips them for building materials, or the river washes them away. The houses were once inhabited by two sisters, why they built their houses so close together, or lived in any proximity at all, is a mystery since they clearly despised one another. It's possible the neighboring houses were an attempt at reconciliation. It didn't work. If anything, close quarters just turned up the pressure until those decades of closely held resentments and animosities were pretty near to boiling over. All that energy had to go somewhere, and both sisters had the same idea. They took up gardening. They both cultivated sunflowers, an improbable crop for this location. Too improbable to be coincidence. Maybe the sunflower had some special meaning for them, or maybe when one sister saw her rival sowing the impossible seeds, she knew at once she couldn't bear to be outdone. Which sister had a greener thumb will never know. The stalks tangled, the roots knotted, and the seeds mixed. Those gangly sunflowers merged the two lots into one undifferentiated field. The two sisters moved out, probably around the time the moths started showing up. 
Of course, there was no selling the lots then, overgrown and bug-chewed as they are. In fact, if the sisters ever tried to sell, they'd be in for a rude shock. Not long ago, a property tax clerk, having seen the two adjoining lots registered to the same last name, presumed they belonged to the same owner and erased the legal border between them. <laughs> Such a cool little story. What's this thing? Ah, now I get to choose what happens. So either Clara, Kate, and I stop to do some business by telephone, or Valkyrie and Blue lounged below deck. Ooh. Wait, who is I? Who's the I in this option? Who am I playing as right now? Shannon? I can't pass up the chance to hang out with the dogs though, right? Ah, oh, here we are. Just, just hanging out. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. While those two gentle beasts kept things under control aboard the mucky mammoth, I went ashore with the rest of the crew to make use of a public telephone. I don't know what I was expecting. I'm like, yeah, I get to play as a dog now. I can move around, talk to people. It's like, no, you're you're a dog. They're just hanging out. And also, Blue is like very, very elderly and doesn't really move much. I called into my answering machine, which I routinely neglect for intervals of months to chip away at the pile. Kay checked in on a client of hers. She's a birth, birth doula. In addition to being a tugboat captain. Did you know that? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, I don't even know what that means. A birth doula. Could that be like a midwife, maybe? I don't know. Clara talked to her sister in Lithuania. Illness in the family, I gather. Anyway, the evening hit a low point, not much later on, so let's take a quiet moment here to listen to the river and reflect on the unburdened sleep of dogs. Ezra taught us a card game, or Shannon, Ezra, the old man, and I stopped at the Radvensky Center to make some quick cash. Let's stop at the center, make some quick cash. <laughs> 